Hey, what's up, Reefers? Welcome to 2017. I hope your New Year's Eve was wonderful. Um, mine was pretty laid back, relaxed, and it was great. Uh, so today we are going to talk about the 45 gallon cube tank. And as you see, I have Stinky here with me. I was doing some tank maintenance and usually he perch on the tank and just hang out a little bit. So I'll let him chill there for a little bit and hopefully he does not poop in the tank. So yeah, it's gonna be annoying like that for the entire video. I'm sorry guys. But I mean, it's the first video of 2017. So let's, uh, let's have a little fun. Let's think he participate a little bit. Uh, so this is the 45 gallon cube tank. And um, right off the bat, you notice there are some changes. Okay, and there is the poop. Nice. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing too. My lord. All right, let me go fish that out. Hold on. All right, so let's try that again. Uh, and you guys just saw the secret to the success of my fish tank. Um, obviously, the poop from my parrot contain a high level of nutrients. Uh, it kind of the, the different types of ammonia spot growth in corals and microfauna, uh, fauna. so um, it adds a little diversity to my tank. And ever since he started pooping my tank, I realized that the coral open bigger, they become more colorful, and fish are a lot more active, as you can see right here. Now I'm just. I'm just kidding, don't, don't believe anything I said. All right, let's get back to the update. So if you follow me on Instagram, you notice that I went to House of Tropicals uh, two weeks ago and I picked up an impulse buy and that's that guy right there. It's called the 24K. At first I thought it's uh, Monipora because that's somebody that worked there told me uh, what it was, but it's actually the same type of coral as the, uh, the jack-o'-lantern, the famous um, jack-o'-lantern. It starts with L. I can't pronounce it, so I won't even try. Maybe I will. Lepo, lepo, lepo something? <laughs> Terrible pronunciation. Why am I even doing YouTube videos? Uh, but that is the same type of coral. Um, they're supposedly a pretty decently fast grower. And I found a great spot for it, situates it well. It's always in the sunlight, so let's see how it does. Now, moving on up, you notice that I moved the Mandipora cap from here to there because I have this big blank spot right there that I was tr kind of picking my brain of like what should I add there or what should I put there and I decided that wait a minute I got this money crap that's growing here and taking over this room why don't I just move it up there and I think it worked out well because um this kind of breaks up the green color here as well so I got green here I got green here so I figure something uh, in the pink orange range would look fantastic there and uh, it has been there for about uh, right after the last update actually right after I shot the video I looked at it I was like hmm let me move it there and I think it's kind of starting to grow in a little bit you see the edges started curling up towards the light and um, I think it's gonna look nice after a while and you notice that I also moved the turtle uh, not the turtle the purple death pally up here as well it used to be down there and it's kind of holding steady and even slowly receding so I don't think it liked that spot it's probably not enough light so I move it up there there's a nice slot that I kind of just like slotted it into uh, it's, I think uh, it's, since, since then I think it opened a lot larger so I think it's happy there and you also notice that the yellow Fiji letter up there um, it's starting to open up, tentacles a lot, uh, it's like more out now, if that's, does that make sense? The tentacles more out, but it's happier, it's generally happier, and it has been in that spot for the past two weeks, and I think it is there to stay. Now, if you guys have keen eyes, you'll notice that I moved the Fethead Dendro back to the spot. It used to be over there, right under the 24K, um, but the tentacle is not always extended there, leading me to believe that it may not like that spot for whatever reason, most likely water flow, because I do not care about light. So I moved it back here, because I remember whenever it was here, it's always open, always big, always ready for food, and sure enough, it is opening large. But for some reason, the bottom polyp right here, half of it is not always open. It's been like that for a while. So that leads me to think that maybe it got stung by the elegance at some point. Uh, and so I kind of moved it out a little bit. And I may move it further out towards the glass so that it's even further away. But I've been eating well. I've been feeding it maybe like two or three times a week. Uh, and I vary the food between frozen and the LPS dry food, the pellets. Elegance coral continued to look fantastic. Uh, during the day, it will shrivel up, 
And every time I look at it, I was like, oh man, I think it's receding, it's not doing well. But every night, when the light comes on, it always expands and looks glorious like this. Moving over here, the Xenia is finally looking nice. Uh, I've always wanted pausing Xenia, but for whatever reason, um, I was never able to grow it in this tank until now. Now they are kind of fat, and although slowly pulsing, but it seems happy. So I'm hoping that they'll start spreading, so I can start sp uh, spreading it around my tank and also give it to some fellow reefers. The zoa colony here still continues to perplex me, uh, this mini colony right there. Uh, it's open maybe 50% of the time. I cannot find any pest on it. Um, but for whatever reason, it just it just open maybe 50% of the time. I'm almost tempted to just kind of pull it out from that rock because it's on a little pebble and just move it somewhere else and replace it with some zoas that stays open 24-7. And looking at this colony here, the Grandes, it's finally sprouting new heads. Uh, I spotted two or even three mini polyps that's growing really rapidly. Uh, it's kind of covered by these um, big polyps right now, but I think soon we're going to see a little bit more. It will probably, uh, the colony is going to get larger in size. Everything else looks good. Uh, the Sunny D is seriously spreading. And the Sunny D turns out to be really, really aggressive feeder. Uh, ever since I started feeding the Fethead Dendro, I have been feeding my Zoas as well. And the Sunny D, the, the re response to food from the Sunny D in terms of grabbing the food is on par with the Fethead Dendro. See how long the tentacles are? As soon as something touches the tentacle, it just grabs and pulls it into the mouth. It's crazy. So they are a joy to feed as well, the, um, the Sunny D. Sliding over. The Gorgonian continues to grow. I think, I remember uh, the last video two and a half weeks ago, it, it's like right at the top of the uh, gyri. Now you see all these um, branches show up and it's even longer now. So, but the interesting thing is that only the section that is um, in front of the gyri is growing upwards. Um, this section is pretty dormant, so I think like uh, as I frag it out, I'll probably frag this part because it's obviously not growing well under this, this, this portion. It really seems to like the light and high flow. Another thing you may have noticed is the frog spawn. It seems a lot smaller now. The reason is that I used to have green tip like right here, and then I also used to have purple tip right here, like a chunk right here. I decided that I, for the frog spawn, I want to just keep one single color. And in large cluster, I noticed that the green tip frog spawn seems to look a lot nicer because it's more contrasty versus the purple tip where the, if you have a cluster of purple tip, it looks almost a little dull uh, because of the color, how close the purple and green are. Uh, I mean like in small quantity, it looks great because it has a lot of details. But when I want to see it in a large cluster like this, I much prefer the green tip look. So I moved the purple tip to the 17 gallon drop off tank where it's, a small, it's in a smaller bunch and then people can look at it up close where it's, uh, it really shines. Now really exciting thing is the uh, bubble tip anemone over here. Let me swing around to the other side of the tank. Maybe even look from the top because we're fancy like that. Uh, the rose bubble tip anemone uh, started growing back to almost the original size now. And right next to it, you will see the, um, well, what used to be the yellow or orange bubble tip anemone. And it has since, then, since lost color when I last talked about it. And if you are on my Instagram, you will see the original photo that I saw of this guy under the seller's tank. And it was like a bright yellow, that's fantastic. Now you can't really tell because uh, I have a lot of white on, but when it is under a slightly more blue light, it, it's, it recently started fluorescing. So it's starting to get this color back and it's looking great. And what's more, I pull the other guy, and it's actually hiding in the back right now, the back of the rock. I pull the other guy from the sump as well because seeing that this baby was able to color up right under this light, I figure, okay, I'll try to color the other guy up too. Unfortunately, as I was removing that one in the back, I tear his foot a little bit. Now, usually it's a huge no-no um, removing it. Uh, Bubble tip anatomy and tearing foot usually is like a death sentence. But this one seems okay right now, so I'm gonna leave it and see how it does. And it's holding on tight, 
So I think it should heal in no time. Now, one thing I have not talked about is actually an update I did to the uh, Radeon G3. I really, really hated the disco light effect. You can still kind of see it. But people are telling me that with the update to wide angle lens, the light color mix a little bit, a little bit better. So I did just that uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I bought the wide angle lens. It's basically just this uh, plastic plate, right? I guess uh, the angle is a little bit slightly wider, slightly, just slightly wider. Um, so I bought it, I replaced uh, whatever I have there. It took me about, people say you can do it in 15 minutes. They must be super fast or they're just lying. It took me like half an hour, but I was a little careful about it too. Um, and after replacing it, to be honest, I don't see too big of a difference. I still see the disco light effect, although, I mean, it's, it's a little bit more gradual. It's not as bad as before. But uh, I do think the coral seems to respond better. As in, like, it seems to, they seem to be happier. Or maybe just straight up placebo. But I do think that coral seems to be happier. Um, I guess I can look back to older video and compare. Uh, to see what is in the shade and what is not, and if the wide angle wide angle lens actually helped. So that is all the happenings with the Coro in the past two and a half weeks. Let's talk about equipment. Equipment, <laughs> I don't even know what's, what happened. Uh, shit just happened starting at January 1st, 2017. But actually, here, check it out. So that is the split of the uh, Rosewood Bit of Anatomy. It's actually like this big right now, uh, but I just turned on the light so it's still kind of waking up. And TJ, that's yours. Let me know when you have time, we'll meet up. So equipment, my god, things are just breaking uh, in the past couple days. Uh, first to go is the Media Reactor's Powerhead. Uh, it came with the MaxiJet 1200. Usually those are bulletproof, at least back in my days. Uh, like 15 plus years earlier. Uh, MaxiJet 1200, it is the go-to powerhead for all your reef aquarium needs. It is bulletproof. But this guy just quit it after like half a year. And I try a vinegar bur vinegar bur uh, bur bath. Vinegar bath. I soaked it in for a couple hours. All the, um, all the crust came out, but like the, the unit will hum, but the propeller would not spin. And then today, the same thing happened to my, well, I'll put it out now, the Eheim, the, the big return pump that I used to use before I upgraded to the g -Bell. So, same thing. Um, all of a sudden, the pump just quit, so the uh, refugium, is, the water is not cycling. So I gave it a vinegar burp, uh, <laughs> god dang it, a vinegar bath. Same thing, all the crust came out, uh, everything is clean. Uh, but when I put a propeller back in and put the power, turn the power on, it would sometimes spin, but most often does not. And when it spins, it's kind of like kind of sketchy, you know. And whenever every single time I put it back here, I run the wire over there. I think it figures fix. I plug it in, and it would not spin. And it just becomes so frustrating. And the same same thing, uh, same symptom. The whole unit would kind of hum and vibrate a little bit, but the propeller would not spin. But there's nothing in the way. I try tabbing it. I try smacking it. I try hitting it nothing worked. So at the end of the day I just pull out my old pump uh, to just pull water here and so that at least we get some circulation going and I will be on the lookout for a used pump, a little bit larger pump, more powerful pump than this locally to uh, for my sump. And I think the media reactors uh, pump I actually bought another MaxiJet 1200 because I, I trust the brand. Damn it. <laughs> uh, so I, I bought another Maxi Jet 1200 for uh, $30, and it should actually arrive tonight. And that, uh, the media reactor being out of commission, may also account for, you may see a light dusting of algae in the back corner where the flow is low, back there, back there. Uh, a tiny bit over here, it's actually not bad. Yeah, so usually I don't really see this, but recently I've been feeding pretty heavily for uh, the fat dendro, and I, I just enjoy feeding the zoa so much, I was just like, throwing things in my tank and without the help of the media reactor the GFO uh, I think LG is I have a light dusting of LG on my sand bed 
but no big deal, those should go away really easily. Now, another thing that fell is actually the Smart ATO's inside magnet. Uh, this may be my fault because uh, as I was giving a bath to the uh, Eheim pump, rest in peace, uh, I threw this magnet in too because it's kind of crusty. So I was like, all right, well, it's so I soaked it for about an hour. When I pulled it out, the thing just separated. Here, let me show you. Actually, no, I shouldn't. Let me unplug this first. All right, let me show you. So it just came apart like this. If you're ever curious about what the inside of the magnet of the Smart RTO looks like, here it is. Now, I am not sure if this separation came today or it has always been separated except the magnet just holding it in place because you see um, all the corrosion here already. It's, uh, that's rust here on the magnet. I'm not sure if rust will happen within like an hour inside vinegar. Or if not, then maybe it has split it for a while. I just didn't know because the whole, pe the whole thing can be held together by magnets. Like, oh, it's actually really strong like this. Uh, but for now, I just use it like this. I know salt water is going creeping in, but um, I ordered this piece um, from Coral View. I was brazing myself because this looks expensive and who knows, right? The whole unit is like $140 or something like that. So I was brazing myself, but thankfully, thankfully, finally someone's merciful and just $10, just $10. So I figured, okay, let me just buy it. Because I thought about just maybe super gluing it and it may be okay, but if it's the unit is just $10, I figure I'll just buy it for peace of mind. So that also broke. But uh, besides those two pumps and the uh, inside magnet, everything seems okay. I can't really complain. I mean, there's no leak, nothing, nothing exploded, no fire, knock on wood. Uh, so I, for the most part, everything is good. And in terms of the pump failing, I wonder if it is due to uh, me dosing calc in my auto top off. And recently I upped the dosage a little bit more, not that much, just a little bit more. So, I, But I wonder if that have an impact on the longevity of the pump, the MJ1200 and the uh, Eheim pump. But at the same time, I'm, I'm not sure because I have a mini pump that sits right in this ATO, right within all these calc water. It's, it's still operating fine, so I don't know. If you guys have any guess, let me know. Although the propeller shaft, they are pretty crusty. And I think that's, um, that's from Calc, but it seems okay. I don't know. All right, so I think this will do it for this update. Again, I hope you guys all have a great new year and I will talk to you guys next time.